Paul's admonition to his understudy, his lieutenant, his son in the faith, Timothy was to be ready in season and out of season. Peter says the same. It is important to be ready to respond in life as the Lord presents certain things to you as, a, as an individual and even as a congregation. And so I just do not feel as though it's appropriate this morning to proceed with uh, the text that I had prepared in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 in light of uh, recent events. Uh, instead, uh, I'd like to focus for a few moments on a separate text the Ephesians, or excuse me, the um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 will keep, as they say, and we can revisit that uh, next week, uh, and what I had prepared uh, there will we'll, we'll certainly keep on the shelf, and we can revisit that next Sunday. But this morning, I want to direct our attention to the book of Ephesians chapter 3, the book of Ephesians chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. And I want to think with you and respond to our current events, our circumstances here, and think, think through with you, what does it mean to be a congregation? And Paul certainly has some things to say about that in Ephesians. And so I want to read this text for you. I'll ask you to remain seated, but... To give your attention to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 7 through 13. Paul says this, of, the, of this gospel I was made a minister, according to the gift of God's grace, which was given me by the working of his power. To me, though I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given. To preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things. So that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. So I ask you not to lose heart over what I am suffering for you, which is your glory. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning and we continue to remember and pray for Jan Heindel and ask that you would bless her and Dave as they are receiving, we trust, good medical care. We pray, Lord, that your Son and our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, would send anew the Holy Spirit and that the healing virtue of the Lord Jesus might be present there. We pray, Lord, that you would help us now as we make adjustments and give attention to your word and consider what does it mean to be a congregation, a congregation that you died in order that we might become. Help us in these things, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As some of you know, I've long time, long been a, a fan of Eugene Peterson. And certainly there are things that, uh, that uh, pastors and uh, theologians can argue with Peterson about over things that he's written. I wouldn't say that Everything that Peterson had done over the course of his career was uh, something that I would affirm. Nevertheless, he was a phenomenal writer and biblical thinker and a theologian in his own right. And I had the privilege of uh, spending some time with Eugene Peterson a number of years ago at his, at his lake house in Montana. And one of the things that attracted me to Peterson was the final five books that he wrote in his career, he called them the Conversation Series. Uh, it, began, it began with Christ Plays in 10,000 Places was the name of the first book, The Jesus Way, um, Tell It Slant, 
There were two others whose names uh, I can't recall. But throughout uh, that series, and then the, the pastoral series, which is another four books that he wrote uh, together, in those uh, nine books, there was a recurring theme. And it was a recurring theme in Peterson's life, and you can read about it in his biographies, his autobiography and other biographies written about him. He desperately wanted to know as a pastor, what does it mean to do pastoral ministry in a congregation? He wanted to identify more closely. He wanted to understand more deeply. What is a congregation? Because he couldn't understand himself as a pastor if he didn't understand what a congregation was. And so he spent much of his career exploring the scriptures studying the Word of God, seeking to understand what does it mean to be a congregation? What does it mean to be a church? The Apostle Paul, in Ephesians chapter 3, is speaking about the church. It sounds like he's talking about himself. Verse 7 of this gospel, I was made a minister according to the gift of grace, which was given me by the working of his power. He talks about how he was uh, the least uh, to be able to, to be given this grace and this uh, responsibility to share the unsearchable riches of Christ. It seems to be a lot about him, but really he's asking about himself in light of something bigger, just like Eugene Peterson was. What does it mean to be an apostle? What does it mean to be a pastor? So that through the church... Paul says, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. What does it mean to be the church? As I've labored in pastoral ministry now for close to 20 years, as I've labored among you here for close to 20 years, if I, as I labored in church planting five years before coming here, as I grew up in the church, but moved from church to church, what seemed like every couple of years being displaced from one congregation to the next, I have spent the better part of my life trying to understand what does it mean to be the church? What is the church? How do I understand it? How do we understand it? My understanding of what does it mean to be the church has been stressed over the last few years. My understanding of what does it mean to be the church has been challenged because of the challenging circumstances that we find ourselves here at Beverly Heights. What does it mean to be the church has been something I've labored over as I've received disparaging emails threatening emails as I've been spoken to in ways that are demonstrably demeaning. I've struggled to understand what does it mean to be the church as we have lost members here at Beverly Heights as our budget has decreased as we've become a scorn in the mouths of others on social media. What does it mean to be the church? What does it mean to be the church? What is my place in it? What is your place in the church? What is congregation? What does that mean? For Paul, it was absolutely central. The context of congregation, the category of congregation, the reality of congregation was central to his understanding of what it meant to be Paul. And the context of congregation was central to Paul's self-understanding, not because he was an apostle, as if he had a, a special anointing or a, a special office, though he did, in the church. That's not what made the church so central, so important to him. The church was central 
and significant to him because he was a human being made in the image of God. And Paul knew that he could not understand himself unless the mystery hidden of ages in God who created all things was made known to him and to everybody else through the church. The church is central. Today, because of the way life is organized, because of the way in which life is ordered, we don't recognize the church as being central to our lives, as being central to our understanding of who we are. It's easy to become church adjacent. Which means that the the church is a, a real entity, a reality that has significance and importance, but it is adjacent to one's life. Not central to one's life. Paul wants to bring to light for everyone what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might be made known to the rulers and authorities in heavenly places. The church is central. It comes home to me anew today as I walked back to the back pew and saw Jan Heindel laying in the pew. Jan Heindel, who can barely walk. Jan Heindel, who is in the twilight years of her life. Jan Heindel, who has a son, who is a pastor, who has been himself maligned and abused and struggled in church ministry. Jan Heindel, who has undergone surgeries and pains and losses in her own life, weak and frail, who is the smoldering wick, who is the bruised reed, Every Lord's Day that she is able musters the strength to ascend those stairs and to make her way into this sanctuary because for her and her life, she knows that the church is central. It's not a small or passing or insignificant reality. I see Marilyn Meek among us today. And I saw her working with all strength and effort to get into this building. And we don't make it easy. We don't have an elevator. And we have this ancient torture device that you have to sit on and ride to make your way up to the sanctuary level. Nevertheless, she took her life into her own hands and strapped in there and made her way up. Why does she do it? Because she said a long time ago, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. What is the congregation? What is a church? It's a place where two people, two, a young man and a young woman who are recently married, who know almost nothing about the place that they're living and know nothing about the people to whom they have been sovereignly scattered. Take a chance in listening to a campus minister like Peter Chase when he said, you should come to Beverly Heights. And I can't think of a congregation that's more different than Southern California. (laughs) But they came. And they invested. They made themselves available and we had the privilege of bringing them into our lives. And they've been in many of your homes on the Lord's Day as they do laundry because it's 
cost them an outrageous amount of money to wash their child's clothes in the apartment complex that they find themselves in. But it doesn't matter because they have a congregation like you that sees them as central to your life. A few weeks ago, the principalities and powers of this world prohibited Lucas from coming to receive the sign. But they persisted. And on the day of Lucas's baptism, the day that Jan Heindel longed to see and to celebrate. Yet another interruption. Seeking to prohibit that the youngest among us would receive that sign and be a part of the congregation. Central. What is the church? What is a congregation? What is it to you? What does it mean for you to be a part of the church? What does it mean for you to understand your life in light of a congregation? Is the church something that is adjacent to your life? Or do you see, as the Apostle Paul did, not because he was an apostle, but because he was called by God and by grace to come out of darkness and into light and life, to recognize that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God might be made known even to the rulers, even to the principalities, even to the end of the age. See, the church is the bride of Christ. That Jesus died and gave his life in order that she might live. Is the church worth dying for? Is the church worth living for? Jesus said yes. Paul said yes. Jan and Dave Heindel said yes. Wes and Hannah So said yes. I say that we all say yes. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the life that we have in you and that we have together by grace. We thank you that you have made us a body. You've made us the church. That you've knit us together as men and women and children who receive a sign that sets us apart, makes us unique. We remember, Jesus, that you bled for the church. You gave your all. We see the sign of Jan and Dave Heindel, they give their all. We see the sign of Wes and Hannah So as they present their all. Would you receive us anew today? And would you make us one? Would you knit us together in order that we might be strong? And so that through this church, the manifold wisdom of Almighty God might be made known even to the principalities, even to the powers, even to the spirits of the air, even to the end of the age. We ask that you would do this by grace. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.